Hey, Shea Cells. Um, so, UFC 302 has finally concluded. I'll be honest, I'm a little hungover. I don't know if you guys can tell by my voice. I, uh, I had all my buddies over last night, and we filmed our reaction to the fights, kind of like what I did for uh, UFC 300, but there just wasn't a lot there, to be honest, other than some absolutely just bizarre judges' scorecards. There just there wasn't a lot. So, you know, I I'll tell you what, I'll show you some highlights from us watching Paulo Costa, Sean Strickland. Dude, wake me up when Islam walks out. You need to cross the hole. You need to cross the hole. If you push your head Jackson, one, two. Jackson, one, two. One, two. So one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Slip. <laughs> yeah, right hand. Like plus 500. Oh, like five, ten X. Dude, he finishes it. Costa? No. Strickland? No, Costa. Oh, yeah. Name one guy. He finished. You're right at home. That doesn't count. We're out. He's playing poker with Luke Rockhold with celebrities. Well, okay. Um, I don't think they're coming. Though. Okay, Johnny Hendricks. That doesn't count, dude. That, that, that doesn't that count. That's fair. Um, who else did? Who else did Coast? Name play? one close to ranked fighter you finished. That's tougher to do. Other than that, I, I don't think the card was very spectacular. I'm also a little sad because for those who had caught my full card breakdown for the event, I pretty much picked every single fight correctly. I see I, I made a lot of you guys some money, which I'm really happy about, but I'm kicking myself because last second I decided to add Phil Rowe to my personal parlay just because he was the underdog and I thought there was some value in him, but I literally said in the video why I did not want to choose him for the parlay because despite being so tall and so long and so rangy, he does not manage distance well. Shorter guys get in the pocket with him regularly. I, I said this, I, I, I told myself that's why he's not a good idea for this parlay, but I, I don't know. I started getting in my own head and second guessing myself and I, I picked him. So I personally lost, but I, I'm glad I won you guys some money. As far as the channel goes, we're officially two for two on parlays for the year. If you guys want to make some money, make sure you guys check out those videos I make. But moving on to the fight everybody's talking about, Islam Mahachev versus Dustin Poirier. Now, something that is just so hilarious about the MMA community is we love jumping to conclusions after a single fight. I mean, I think that that's kind of our thing, you know? Directly after the second Volkanovski fight, everybody was like, wow. Okay, Islam Mahachev is better than Habib. I mean, I mean, look at that. He, he, he knocked out Alexander Volkanovsky with a head kick. I mean, clearly, he's better than Habib. Then the Dustin Poirier fight happens, and immediately everyone's like, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. No, no, okay, no, never mind, never mind. Uh, no, 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 yep, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, scratch that. Scratch that. And, you know, the reason everybody feels this way, it's pretty simple. Habib pretty much bulldozed Dustin. I mean, Dustin really couldn't do anything against him. Whereas Islam, he got taken into deep waters. He got cut really bad, which just doesn't help his case. Because, you know, everyone's like, dude, Habib never bled, bro. He never bled. But he never fought prime Tony Ferguson, so shut the fuck up. I, look, I, I think he would have beat uh, prime Tony Ferguson, but he probably would have bled in that fight. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of the attitude of everybody right now, that Islam is now officially ranked one lower than Habib. But it's funny, and I, I don't think that's fair at all, because, look, they are not the same fighter. I mean, they are not one-to-one. -one. It seems like a lot of people treat Islam as Habib reincarnate. But the truth is, their styles are different. And because of that, they match up against guys very differently. Now, of course, Dustin outperformed everybody's expectations. But you know, personally, I attribute that to a very good game plan by him. When Dustin fought Habib, he was trying to be very, very offensive in the grappling against him, which just was a bad idea, and he himself afterwards said it was a bad idea. He was trying to go for all these hip switches and reversals, and Habib just defended one after the other after other, and he really fatigued himself, gave everything he had in that guillotine, couldn't finish it, was exhausted, and then he got choked. And against Benoit saint Denis, he was also trying to be very offensive in the grappling. So, you know, it was safe to assume the same thing was going to happen against Islam, but the only times Dustin really scrambled were defending takedowns or trying to escape submissions. Other than that, when he got taken down, when he got his back taken, he just kind of rode the round out. 
which allowed him to have moments of success on the feet. You know, to me, the most important aspect about this fight was something that I've been saying for a very long time and so many people thought I was crazy for saying it. I've always maintained Islam Mahachev is not the best wrestler in the division. I mean, he's not. Gamrot is the best with Armin Sarukian behind him. Every time I would say that, I would receive tons of comments being like, dude, how could, how could you say that, bro? He out-wrestled Armin. I mean, th th that is so stupid. But what's so important to understand is Islam is a very, very well-rounded grappler from Sambo. But he's never had a wrestling match. I mean, pure wrestling is not his specialty. And it wasn't Habib's either. Habib really struggled getting takedowns out in the open. But against the fence, he was the best in the world by far. And what we saw from this fight was, when Islam would get Dustin backed up to the fence, he was having a lot of success getting takedowns. But out in the open, picking up those single legs, Dustin was able to defend. I mean, Dustin has been working with Mateus Gamrot a lot. His takedown defense out in the open has improved a ton, and like I said, that's not Islam's specialty. Islam's specialty is not shooting takedowns out in the open. I mean, it just isn't. The other big stylistic difference between Habib and Islam that we saw from this fight was, in the grappling... Habib's style is much more pressure, much more folk-style wrestling-based, which Daniel Cormier himself talked about how he taught Habib folk-style wrestling. But are you the one who taught Khabib the wrist ride stuff? So Khabib and them knew how to ride the wrist a little bit. What we did was I was showing, I was showing him just collegiate wrestling. Ben, yeah, folk-style, because it's endemic yes. to folk-style wrestling. Yes, and what folk style wrestlers specialize in is pinning guys and holding them down. You know, and, and that's what he was so good at. Wrist riding, mat returns. I mean, it was a nightmare to stand back up against Habib. But Islam wouldn't really utilize that same kind of pressure. I think in that specific area, Habib's better. But what Islam likes to do, he loves hunting for your back. And he is very good at it. Sliding his hooks in, slapping the body triangle on you. And we saw that multiple times in this fight. And the other big difference on the feet was Habib's entire game plan was just to pressure you with a big flurry, get you backed up to the fence so he can shoot. But Islam's striking is way cleaner than Habib's ever was. I mean, Islam literally boxed with Dustin out in the open. He was slipping, he was landing his own shots, and he was having a lot of success with it. I mean, I was genuinely very impressed. I mean, there was a large, large portion of this fight where he was playing Dustin's game, which I honestly wouldn't have guessed he'd do that. I thought he was going to stay on the outside and only throw kicks, just completely avoid the boxing, and anytime Dustin got close to him, he was just going to shoot over and over again. But I mean, no, he, he did. He, he tried to box with him. So because of these differences in style, I think Dustin is a tougher matchup for Islam than he was for Habib. You know, on the contrary, I think Volkanovski is a really difficult matchup for Habib and a much better matchup for Islam. The big reason why Islam was able to beat Volkanovski in the first fight was because of his striking. Because on the ground, you know, despite having success, what the Dagestanis are so good at is breaking their opponents on the ground and then taking whatever submission they leave open because they're so exhausted. But Volk is just unbreakable. It doesn't matter what kind of pace you put on him, he's going to match it and he's going to be hanging in there with you and eventually he's going to outwork you, which is what we saw at the end of that first fight. That is why in the rematch, Islam didn't even really try to grapple. And, and I honestly think Habib would have had a problem trying to pressure Volkanovski up against the fence. And Islam in that fight was a sniper. I mean, he was landing some clean straight left hands. And Habib did not have that same technical ability to land shots like that. So he would have to try to shoot out in the open, which as we already know, it's not his specialty. And I think he would have had a really, really tough time trying to box Volkanovski out in the open. I mean, even if he did hypothetically get Volkanovski down up against the fence, yeah, Volk would have a harder time trying to stand up against Habib than he did against Islam, but would Habib be able to submit him? I mean, probably not. Now, again, submissions are not their specialty. It took him four rounds to submit Connor after landing a clean overhand and then pounding him out for the entirety of the second round. So look, point is, you cannot say based on that performance last night that just, oh, well, Habib was simply better. I, uh, they're different. They have different styles, and they match up against opponents differently. I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, Islam's next fight is probably going to be against Armin, and I'll tell you what, that is not an easy fight at all. I mean, Habib never faced somebody as good as Armin in the wrestling. 
and if Islam struggles, people are going to double down and say, yeah, see, yeah, look, yeah, 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 Habib is w he'd be better, way better. And if Islam happens to destroy Armin, it's going to go right back to, okay, no, well, I, you know, yeah, never mind, I guess Islam is better. You're, you're going to go in circles with this all day. It, it just depends who they're matched up with.